everyone, and today I'd like to introduce you to the Forum of Pompeii, one of the most bustling, busy, and important parts of the city of Pompeii. We've already had a look at the Forum briefly in a few of our stories, when Caecilius visited the Forum to go to his banker's stall and conduct other business. But today we're going to meet the Forum in a more uh, detailed kind of way. We're going to have a look at all the different activities that people might do in the Forum, and ways that they might uh, interact with other people at the Forum. So let's have a look at Pompeii's Forum. Here you can see the, both the ruins of Pompeii's Forum and also a recreation of what the Forum might have looked like, or likely looked like, back in Pompeii's heyday, before Vesuvius uh, erupted. Unfortunately, as you can see, the ruins are quite damaged around the Forum, and there isn't as much as we would like still standing and visible around the Forum today. This is because after Pompeii was buried, unfortunately, looters came to the city because they knew it, where it was located, and many of the riches of Pompeii were located in the Forum, such as these statues, as you can see here in the recreation, which are made of bronze. And unfortunately, looters dug down to the Forum of Pompeii and took away many of the valuable items, which is partly why the Forum is so uh, disrupted today and not as well preserved as other parts of the city. As you can see in recreation, the Forum of Pompeii was a bustling, busy place where lots of people were at all times of the day. You can see in this picture how many people uh, would have been moving around the Forum at any time moving carts, selling their wares, setting up little business stalls, um, and just interacting with other people and meeting people. You can also see how grand and impressive the Forum was, with its multiple stories of buildings on either side and very tall, grand temples uh, at the front and sides of the Forum. Let's have a look at what some of these buildings would have been. The first building I'd like us to look at is the Temple of Jupiter and it sits at the very head of the Forum. In fact, it is the temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus, the best and the greatest. And that is because he is really the head god of the Roman pantheon. All Pompeians likely would have come to the temple of Jupiter at some time or another to worship the king of the gods. You can see here the remaining ruins of the temple of Jupiter, especially the steps leading up to the temple and then the colonnade at the front. The altar of the temple is just sort of barely visible here at the back, where sacrifices would have been conducted to the god. Here you can see an image, a recreation of what the Temple of Jupiter likely looked like. You can see the pediment at the top, decorated with statues above and bas relief inside, and also a very beautifully decorated uh, colonnade at the front and sides of the temple. The Temple of Jupiter really is the grandest temple in the Pompeian Forum, located right at the top um, because of the importance and the prominence of this god. As we move around the Roman Forum, you'll see just to the right of the Temple of Jupiter is the Covered Market. This is another location very important to the Pompeians, and as you can tell from the name, it was a marketplace. It was a location where people set up permanent stalls like shops and could sell their goods. You can see from the ruins here the colonnade and the outside colonnade uh, still standing, unfortunately not particularly well preserved, but you can also see part of the second story up here. So this was another very grand, very large building. Here's a better section of colonnade still standing, again that would have supported a second layer on top, and as its name suggests, it was covered and it did have a roof made of likely wood and canvas. Um, stretched to, to protect the indoor stalls from the elements, both sun and rain and wind. What could you buy in this covered market? Just about anything you wanted. You could get food, anything from fruits and vegetables, to fish, to meats, to prepared food, bread, desserts, all kinds of things like that. You could also buy clothing, togas, cloth to make clothing and togas, shoes, jewelry, writing tablets, just about anything you might have wanted in Pompeii was likely available at the covered market. Our next building, just beside the covered market as we move around the Roman Forum, 
is another temple, and this temple is to the Lares and the Roman Emperor jointly. You may remember the Lares from when we talked about the Roman houses, um, and each house in the atrium has its own lorarium, or shrine to the Lares, the household gods, where Pompeians might make small daily sacrifices to their household gods that protected them and their family. Well, not only did households have Lares, but in fact, the entire city of Pompeii had its own lares, which were worshipped here at this temple in the Forum, in a very prominent place. And that's because Pompeians wanted the lares to protect them and protect their city. So they would offer sacrifices here at this altar in the center uh, of the temple to the lares to protect them and their city. This temple also became the place for worship of the Roman emperor. During the Roman imperial period, as, uh, as the period moved on, Roman emperors started to be worshipped as gods, and if not themselves personally as a god, at least their spirit was worshipped as divine during their own lifetime. So Romans would also come here to sacrifices to the emperor, a place of real patriotism for both their selves, their city, and their empire. As we continue around the forum, you'll see here in the bottom right-hand corner was the polling station. A polling station for what, you might ask? Well, for the municipal elections, because in fact, Pompeii was a democracy. Now, not a democracy as we are a democracy today, because only male citizens would have been eligible to vote. Caecilius, our main character in our stories, was in fact a Roman citizen, and so he would have been eligible to vote in these municipal elections. But of course, Grumio, Clemens, Metella, Melissa, women and slaves were not eligible to vote and did not vote at the polling station. Also, people who did not own property were also not always allowed uh, to vote over the course of the Roman Empire. So you had to be a landholder and a property holder in order to participate in these elections. What would Caecilius have been voting for? Well, he would have been voting in the elections of Pompeii for the city positions. So these are things like the duo weary, which were two men who were co-mayors, essentially, of the city. The position was called a duo weir, um, for a year. So Caecilius would have voted for that position. Also positions like Aeles, which we'll talk about later in this course. So in this important center of Pompeii was where those elections took place. At the base of the forum, you can see here the municipal offices of the city of Pompeii. Now we're not entirely sure what would have gone on in these buildings exactly, but our likely guess is a treasury and office building of some kind where clerks and um, and people who sort of did the work, the city of Pompeii, of managing the city, managing the taxes, and other uh, important business of Pompeii would have done their work and kept their records. Um, you can see here from the bird's eye view, the sort of the top edges of the buildings, which are pretty well preserved, and this little entrance archway, which is this entrance archway on our larger pic picture. And then you can see the buildings a little bit behind. In the left-hand corner of our forum is the Basilica. We've already talked a little bit about the Basilica, or the courthouse of Pompeii, um, but this was one of the most important buildings in the city because it was where people could go to receive justice in disputes that they might be having. Here in the ruins, you can see the colonnades that existed, and in fact, you can see part of the second story in the ruins uh, of what would have existed for the Basilica. What's really nice is this artist's recreation of what the basilica looked like at the height of Pompeii. You can see it's not just two, but in fact three levels of colonnade uh, with a roof over top. And you can get a sense of just how grand and how beautiful the basilica of Pompeii really was. Anyone entering this basilica would have immediately been struck by the, the grandeur, the elevation, the height of the building, the marble facades of all the archways, and just how elegant this place really was. It would have inspired a sense of respect among the people. Now you may notice that the basilica doesn't seem to have 
individual courtrooms where cases might have been heard. And that's a very astute observation. In fact, the Basilica was a big open space that might have had many court cases happening at the same time within the Basilica. So one judge in one corner, another judge halfway up, another judge at the far end, all hearing their own separate court cases. And you can only imagine how noisy and busy and chaotic it would have been in the Basilica with uh, spectators talking to each other and commenting about the cases, lawyers yelling out objections and making their arguments, and judges striving to be heard above the chaos. It would have been quite a scene in the Basilica of Caecilius's day. The last building I'd like us to look at is on the left-hand side of the forum, you can see right here, and it is another temple, this time the Temple of Apollo. We can see the features that we've come to expect from the other temples in the Forum of Pompeii, the altar and the steps leading up to a nice colonnade at the top of the temple. Um, and this was where the god Apollo was worshipped. Now, the god Apollo is god of many things in the Roman pantheon, not least the sun god, but he's also the god of music, the god of prophecy, and sometimes also the god of medicine. You can see here in this recreation that his temple is not quite as grand as the temple of Jupiter, which might be expected since he is not Optimus Maximus like Jupiter is, but still a very grand place with beautifully decorated columns, a statue of Apollo over here uh, off to the side, and of course uh, a very beautifully created building. So what can we say about these buildings that we've seen around the Roman Forum? Well, I think we can say that they fall into three main categories, religious, economic, and administrative government buildings. Really, these three main pillars of Roman society are all centered around the Forum, where people could go to get all of these things done. Of course, we've seen the religious aspect in the three different temples that we looked at, the Temple of Jupiter, Optimus Maximus, the Temple of Apollo, and the Temple of the Lares and the Emperor, where Pompeians could go to worship on behalf of their city and on behalf of the Roman Empire. We've seen the economic cornerstones of the Pompeian economy in the covered market, where stalls would have existed to sell just about anything, and also in the main area of the Forum, where business would have been conducted, people would have met each other for different meetings to exchange and to do business, and, uh, and very much of Pompeii's economy would have been conducted. And then, of course, we've also seen the administrative government buildings centered around the Forum, the polling station for elections, the municipal offices for the daily business of the city, and, of course, the basilica, the courthouse, where people could go to receive justice. So I think through these buildings that we've looked at around the Forum, we get a sense of just how important and central the Forum was to Pompeian life, and how important it would have been for all Pompeians to visit the Forum and participate in the bustling city life around them. Thank you.